Hello and welcome back. Here we are continuing our Japan run. You see we are not yet red Japan. That's because we got caught up. We got lost in the sauce all last episode trying to pass agrarianism, which we think might be insanely good for this strategy specifically. And that strategy is rice farms are absurd. They are the most absurd. They got uber buffed and they got buffed in a way that probably will be fixed. Might even be fixed by the time this video comes out. Uh, but they have double production. Uh, they have a double, so double outputs, double inputs, double employment. And you're thinking, hey, what's the problem? This is just normal stuff. Uh, they have the same amount of construction cost. So it's like building two buildings in one building. Absolutely insane. So we are just absolutely smashing these uh, out of the park. They require very little construction uh, unless they've hotfixed it. They have not. Uh, still requiring 200 construction uh, per level. And so these are absolutely insane. We are just cranking up. We're giving rice to the masses when, we're at, when we are inquiring to them. Do you have rice? Snitches. And that is snitches because they are going to tell on us to Paradox or and tell Paradox, hey, this guy's building too much rice. He's trying to become the rice lord, rice warlord. Uh, he's trying to be somebody. He's trying to not just talk about it. He's trying to be about it. And by be about it, I mean we've been trying to get off traditionalism for forever. Traditionalism is really, really bad. Uh, specifically, it's even worse now that it gives negative mappy. And I know what you might be thinking: what the hell is mappy? Market access, pri market access price impact. This always creates inefficiency in your market. And currently, uh, it does it through local prices. And so we have to pay more for goods or we get less when selling goods in all of our provinces uh, in a way that uh, it is diluted by local prices relative to market prices. We'd prefer to always buy and sell at market prices, but instead we have to sell at this local price. And the level of this dilution is determined by your mappy. So for example, we have a mappy of 70% right now. Uh, we have uh, the base is 75 or something, and then we have plus 50. Uh, this one, this tool tip's a little bit hard to hover. I think that there's a, I think that there's a, ah, we are currently, there we go, hey, we got it. We are getting minus 15% uh, from traditionalism and plus 10% from stock exchange. Currently, we would like to get rid of this traditionalism modifier. That way we can sell all of our rice to everyone uh, at a higher price. You know what they say, rice is price, price is rice, the rice is price, the price is right, the rice is right. And we are going to be continuing on with this run, trying to go that direction. Now, for now, we're going to be trying to do a pony bureaucrats, but we are eventually going to come back and get agrarianism if it's the last thing we do. If they... Really, really, we literally bombed out of it three times, I think, last episode, which I don't think I've failed to pass a law more, and I don't think I've failed to pass a law that I have not liked passing anyways more than that either. Uh, we do have another interest over here, so we're going to colonize Pink. I think we're going to go after Congo at some point once we get this native uprising put down. That way we will have a native interest here, and we can put interests around. Reverse swing is super OP, and so being able to have a lot of interest is really powerful. We don't really have that as Japan, but not the biggest deal. Uh, so we will be continuing on our way. Okay, we have gotten a little bit busy hiring and firing uh, our generals and admirals. And I think we've finally gotten a good situation where we are specifically looking at the popularity here of our um, shogunate guys. So we see this guy's popularity minus 25. This guy's popularity is plus 10. And this guy is a protectionist. And then we see a zero, a zero, a minus 39, and a minus, uh, or that guy's not even a landowner, or landowner. So, it is quite likely when we exile dissident on our landowner, we will get the protectionist guy. The protectionist guy is what we want very, 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 very badly now. We don't want the jingoist, and we get the protectionist, and now we are going to be able to pass some reasonable looking laws. So we're gonna put the protectionist in power, and we have to just have this guy not die in a month, which has happened to us already when, with our last protectionist, but this guy is going to allow us to move on to agrarianism because while he likes interventionism best, he prefers agrarianism to our current system of uh, traditionalism. So he is going to allow us to help pass this, but not only this, uh, he's probably gonna jive a lot better with the, well, he jives okay with the industrialist, but definitely better. And so all we have to do is keep this poor precious protectionist alive. We have to protect him and we will be able to go agrarianism. 
hopefully this is the idea now we are putting this down here as far as our overall plan i think we should try and work to get as many diplomatic interests in various areas as possible because the reverse sway mechanic is stupidly op it's not well balanced and we can try and crank up a whole lot this way economically speaking we are cranking up with the uh just kind of like taking a look at what we're doing uh is we have this uh these food industries and they're coming up and already the food industries are starting to depress the prices of stuff but they help to increase the price of the grain making the grain more profitable allowing us to build more grain which is the absurd building and so we are trying to create production chains that move revolve around this also we have a ton of throughput on this as a result of this is on our company and so this is going to help us out quite a lot we are going to make sure that we are in fact colonizing over there uh we still are colonizing there where do we have all these new col okay we don't have a new colony areas uh but we, i think we're going to save and go after congo the main reason we're saving is because our war goals can get bricked if congo reverse sways us uh in order to give someone an obligation but we really have to cut costs here we really really have to cut costs so i think we're actually going to do that now uh because you do not want to as an unrecognized power run a huge deficit and so ooh, uh, is, is there another place we can go all right, and the construction sectors here. We're going to downsize some construction sectors um, in a bunch of areas. And I think we're going to downsize particularly not in Kanto and Tohoku because we're building tall here and we actually have like steel and iron here. And so every place that is not those that has a level three, we're just going to knock it down. Now, because this affects local prices pretty uh, pretty profoundly, we don't want to do too, too much, uh, but we are going to uh, decrease several of these. I think we're going to decrease a couple more and uh one in beijing we should have kept the beijing one uh chubu i believe has a lot of wood so that's okay chukogu uh we kind of want to build up kyushu does have some tools so maybe chukogu is the way to go uh shikoku uh does in fact actually have iron so we won't downsize that and we will see kind of what this looks like we are starting to pay a whole lot in interest here and uh we do de definitely want to kind of get off of that um because you do you will run into like a little bit of a death spiral so why don't we uh so any place that's not shikoku that has a level two we are going to downsize that now uh and so to try and alleviate this pressure also uh, a diplomatic pact could greatly help us get out from under this also also uh if we were to get uh recognition which we want to peel off of from russia this would also help maybe we can actually just grab recognition from france um we are amicable with them yeah we're pretty far off we could try and get recognition from prussia maybe um or austria we the landings are automatically successful and so we can land anyone in the game currently and we do not have a truce with them so maybe we actually go after force recognition we do have a little bit of infamy but i think we want to accumulate a little bit more infamy before we go after something like that looks like venezuela goodbye to you guys so we'll look around for a war you know a little bit a really big driver of why we're unprofitable right now by the way we're going to war with congo is the fact that we built this level 21 unit which might have been a little bit overkill but i think what we can try and do is try and bring down the price of paper a little bit here and so we'll put this on auto expand we'll put one of these at the front of the queue and then there's going to be one auto queuing into the back of the queue and then we'll also put the logging camps here on auto expand and swap them to softwood production that way the chain for the paper mill is a little bit better uh now that there's a decreased softwood price and hopefully this will bring down the price of some of the inputs we are paying you know not too much on paper it's mainly in the wages uh, but this is helping us to we are kind of moving pretty quick on tech as a result of this but maybe it's just not worth it but it is helping us catch up a lot we are getting a decent chunk of tech spread uh, because whatever you uh, whatever is not in your literacy overflows to tech spread but maybe it's just maybe we should have downsized not the construction centers and instead downsized uh, some of the university right now the economy's scale is really good on universities we do enforce on Congo uh, wait what Okay, so we got the whole shebang, uh, and now we have a pretty high amount of infamy. Or, well, it's not really that high amount of infamy. I suppose at this point, we maybe want to go after Brunei if they've discovered any gold. Uh, they are our subject, and this is a gold spot, and they do have gold, and so this might help us with the money problem. But on top of that, iron is generally going to be good to have, and uh, they've already expanded out all their arable land. Unfortunately, we won't be able to build the rice up to the stratosphere, but incorporating this into our market 
market still will have positive benefits for us. Just kidding, we didn't mean it. Uh, when we went to try and annex them, the UK uh, joined against us uh, for nothing. The, U, uh, the AI overall in 1.5 does behave all kinds of weird, and so... Uh, it's kind of been a little bit, if you're looking at and playing this, just expect the AI to just be doing really psychotic things. Like right here, we have another another thing going into Great Xing, and you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna ask if we can sway anyone onto either side. You know what we would really like? Shang Zi. This is perhaps the best province in the game these days, uh, you know, without a unique building, especially because they buffed all the, the plantation, they buffed this to apply to plantations and agriculture, but not only that, we of course, it's the best resource province in the game, also has 50, or sorry, 30 undiscovered oil, and hey, Great Britain, will you give us this? Ask for war goals? Ask for conquer state? ask for mm, doesn't look like they like it they will give us sulu well that's comforting uh they would give us a bunch of these interior states but they won't give us what we want which is shang -Zi. but hey 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 what about you will you give us shang -Zi? ask for war goals nah they'll only give us this other stuff so let's see if we can get maybe war reparation no nope, we can just get war goals only or we can get war goals let's see for war reparations on Shing, this would really allow us to re-crank the construction back up. Um, so this would be good. Uh, re liberating a subject. We could liberate shang -Zi and then conquer shang -Zi. So let's see. Nope. Liberate country. Liberate Mongolia. Oh, do they not allow you to liberate shang -Zi anymore? Because shang -Zi is in northern, northern China. Maybe this is new. That China can't release these, or they can't be libbed from them. Uh, we're not going to liberate Mongolia. I think we're going to go for war reparation. Oh, we can't even get Qing war reps. Okay, okay, okay. I see you. I see you. Now, are any of these coastal? Shejiang would be okay. Uh, so would Manchuria. So would Outer Manchuria, Northern Manchuria, Moan. Moen, uh, we can pick up Moen here. It's going to cost us 10 infamy. Uh, and what will we get here in return for this? Uh, so, not the highest population. Uh, it does kind of move us in deeper into getting access to maybe other territories. But they will not, they will not uh, try and... They will not give us exactly what we want so this maybe they've patched it to make the ai a little bit more sane because they're not just giving us war reparations uh they're not just offering us uh, their bodies they're not giving us or actually sorry just a sec they're already offering us their body they're already bankrolling us so we can't uh, <laughs> we can't re-bankroll but um, so we could transfer subject maybe don't really think these are either these are I mean we transfer Sulu we tried to puppet Sulu initially and wasn't able to transferring Korea would be funny liberate subject land paying Sulu hmm oh you know what we do not have an interest in a Manchuria and so that is actually going to be why we cannot get anything from them for in Manchuria so why don't we uh, actually declare some interests in both South China and Manchuria and see if maybe we can get anything else a little bit more useful looking. Actually, you know what sounds good? Uh, revoking the claim on Beijing, uh, which isn't like the most tremendous war goal because uh, these guys won't transfer a state to us. If they would have transferred Shangzi, definitely help them out. But we are going to offer, hey, you will uh, revoke the claim on Beijing uh, because this is we can't get anything too, too crazy here. Uh, but revoking the claim on Beijing will be reasonable. And then now we're on side of the play, or we just take one beat and we'll be on the side of the play. And now we are going to annex Brunei. And now the UK cannot side against us. Uh, and this is our own play, so we can declare this one in addition to already being in the UK one, which is going to help us out quite a bit. We could handle someone other than Mummy, and so we are going to be able to get some gold from this, and also, uh, you know, fight our, our nemesis, I guess, uh, Great Xing, uh, who is going to be look at us more favorably after this, because then we will no longer have a province uh, that has uh, their... Uh, what is it? Now, wait, why is our war goal not in here? Hold the phone. Why is our wargle not in here? Weird. Anyways, I guess we don't get a wargle. 
Uh, so I guess we can leave this uh, relatively early, uh, but we will be getting in on Brunei, uh, hopefully here. Uh, looks like Spain supported. Uh, Great Shing has broken out. This is fine, but we're just going to be looking to annex here. We can sway. It's not going to be. <laughs> we can sway Great Shing. Uh, against Spain, but uh, we're not going to put any war goals in on Spain, I don't think. Uh, we're just going to look to occupy this and uh, then enforce and something like this. Um, I mean, I don't think we could put any too useful on Spain. I mean, I guess we could squeeze war reps out of them and maybe uh, we could liberate the Philippines if we wanted. This would pull the Philippines in here. We could probably land the Philippines. I don't want to get too fancy with it. I just, I'd rather they don't commit very, very many troops to this and we instead just get to do this. Uh, now, we do have, hopefully they don't have return Beijing. Looks like they don't. Yeah, and the revoke claim in Beijing is there. Uh, so that's going to be helpful. Uh, but they are going to be able to push us out here, and we're going to get full occupied unless, 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 unless we just capitulate. I mean, maybe we do that once this war pops off. That way the UK can no longer join. Uh, of course, we could just wait, and they'll probably revoke the claim. We'll see what we do. So, canneries is going to be a really big tech for us. Uh, now we're starting to get into the heavier groceries techs. Um, this is going to create a lot of demand for iron, so this is going to, uh, you know, on some hand be ha bad, but it's also going to create a bunch of demand for fish. So what we're going to do, also we're just going to let the UK use Beijing as a staging ground and let them fight that war sort that out themselves that's their problem not ours i think what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we have a level one iron mine in shikoku and in also uh well sakhalin and hokkaido do not have a lot of labor so we won't build there but then we're going to come in and make sure we also have a level one uh fish fishing wharf in everywhere because uh canning will start to use a fish now and then we're going to also set all of our fish on auto expand um, so that they can help supply all of the uh, the food industries which we're gonna kick up now it's not profitable right now it is gonna make a bunch more groceries the groceries prices are getting really depressed but it will in turn uh, stimulate oh actually you know what this uses less grain this uses less grain we don't like that it uses less grain grain is so dirt cheap because we have been the rice farmer that we are Maybe we don't even turn this up. Maybe we actually locally turn it up uh, on the basis of actually having uh, some amount of uh, fish available. So like here, there's a ton of fish. So will this one be profitable? Not really. It does make more groceries a little bit, uh, but the groceries price is already really depressed. Um, it's depressed in part by the throughput. And uh, I think that we're gonna need to find a place where we have both fish and iron in order for it to look particularly good. Like we have a decent amount of fish and iron here. So does it look good here is kind of the question. Uh, and yeah, it doesn't really look good here either. The problem is, man, the grain is really, really, really cheap. And so switching to this PM might not be good. Now, it is going to make the iron mines more profitable. So there's that. And I don't have a problem building out the fish. I think eventually we want to get to this. We want to get to being on this. Uh, this tooltip probably is lying to us because they're at equilibrium employment right here. Because um, it's going to make a bunch more groceries. But on the other hand, we do have a lot more iron here. Um, but yeah, the uh, the outputs have become so cheap and it is very hard for us to increase the price of the outputs while we are still on uh, traditionalism because it hurts our ability to export. So let's go agrarianism now uh, and hopefully get into that, which is going to make these guys super happy because they're protectionists. So now we are getting in increased uh, contribution efficiency from these guys. So that's super nice. Um, and that is uh, also what a lot of our industry has been built up. It looks like the UK is doing okay in this war uh, and won't need our help. It looks like we might need to re-land this. I thought we had our landing coming in. Oh, yep, we did. Ba-bink, ba-boom. Uh, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. The landings automatically succeed in this one. And so we will be getting in on... We will just be annexing Brunei and then backing down on the other portion. But it's a little bit weird that uh, we can't turn these up. Uh, we might try and do it uh, as we build up more fish. So I think we'll just put the fish on auto expand and let them slowly come on up. Uh, and the whaling should be pretty good too. And so we'll put all these on auto expand now. And um, 
you know, continue along our merry way. So we currently aren't producing any uh, food industries, and so what we're going to do is actually disband this. We're going to lose out the construction bonus and the throughput bonus, but to be fair, uh, the price of these outputs are kind of depressed anyways, and instead what we're going to do is we're going to pick up a potential company in the form of uh, the Combine of Fishes. We're going to establish this, and this is going to increase the construction speed on this. Now, we do have some of these in the queue uh, kind of coming on up in just a moment here, and so that's going to help. Oh, I guess we do have that one food industry there um we did do a little bit of a landing uh to try and uh you know make this war finish faster because this is going to be the the chinese capital almost always oh my god holy shit is this real life i've literally never failed a law this much i'm actually so pressed I'm gonna load. <laughs> I'm gonna load, and I'm gonna put the rural fucking gun so it doesn't insta kill the law. Jesus, just two bad ticks in a row with no oppo. Not even playing poker has prepared me for such terrible variants. We had something just kill the law here, uh, an event. Oh, why is it? How is it killing twenty four percent though? Okay, what we're gonna do here is we are going to reform the government. We're gonna put this guy in gov, or sorry, we're gonna put. This guy in Gov, who also supports, uh, you know, us getting onto agrarianism. And now we're going to have a 37% tick. But I'm wondering why the 25% tick killed the law. Was it just being spectacular or lucky? Well, now we attract new support. I thought that... That's interesting. I was pretty sure we were supposed to get the exact same tick. So we were supposed to get whatever negative tick we had there. Uh, but we will continue on and we will become the rice lord this episode. Or I'm going to tear all of my hair out. Every single hair on my head. It's gonna be out. It's gonna be gone. Gone, gone. So I think that we're really not gonna benefit too much from the throughput on mechanized workshops because we've had to spread out the economy. So I think we're gonna go empiricism instead into egalitarianism and understanding that we are going to get agrarianism and this empiricism is going to help us get more research by quite a lot because it will improve the pm and then egalitarianism will unlock one of the better tax methods. Although to be fair our current tax method might actually be better. Um, so the thing is, is usually land-based taxation is not very good. It doesn't generate a lot of revenue. But it looks like it's actually pretty pretty good for us for generating revenue because we have so many rice farms, <laughs> which is not a situation I've had before. So, uh, But I, I, I don't think... We are going to go empiricism, but it's much less of a priority to go egalitarianism, but that is absolutely insane, because that's normally uh, an insanely good tech, but we just don't have the look for it. Um, and so we do have to choose between water tube boiler and uh, this over here. I mean, we are going to build up furniture a little bit. I don't think we have anything that's going to benefit from the EOS to 31. Uh, so maybe we go water tube boiler instead, something like this. Uh, we are kind of well on our way towards enforcing. Uh, now, this is their capital, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it is their capital. So all UK has to do is to push into them. And so it'd be able to do this. I think that we will just take the enactment chance and try and get in there. Inefficient agriculture will, of course, follow their advice. Yeah, all you have to do, UK, is push. You're the little children who could, or the little, the little engine who could. This is our strategic objective. But do they just not like pushing is the question, and this might be this might be the case. If they don't like pushing, we're never going to enforce on them, because uh, we, all by ourselves, cannot get this done. We will have to recruit up a guy uh, to uh, lead these men. Probably, well, okay, well, the Buddhist monks guy will be fine, I guess, for now. So we'll get another landing, which will open up a new front, so hopefully... They try and figure out how to push. Um, I don't know. Okay, so we did get enforced on um, because I, I'm not sure exactly why we got enforced on. Uh, maybe because they didn't have any. Yeah, it's because they didn't have any war goals on us. Uh, now we got to declare on Russia here, and we're going to be landing their capital and Alaska uh, while they're distracted a little bit with Prussia. And so hopefully we can get this in. Uh, 
yeah, I mean, we're gonna take this. 94% chance, there's no way we lose this here. Uh, but these landings are gonna automatically get in on both Alaska and uh, the capital of Russia, and we are gonna hope to decay, decay them down uh, fairly quickly. We have uh, a rather modest uh, request for recognition, war reps, and uh, revoking their claim on Sakhalin, so we aren't accumulating any infamy. Perhaps it would have been a little bit better to release Perm or um, Ukraine, probably would have been, uh, but this is fine, uh, and we get in here, notably speaking. So now we are going to enforce on them relatively quick. They're going to probably almost certainly push us out, but if they're going to push us out and they're not going to land us, this is super fine. And so what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to pretty aggressively do demobilize and remobilize and then reland uh, as a means of, you know, trying to fight these guys. So we're going to come in here, we're going to land, and we're going to land with this one stack, which is just going to get in and be annoying more than anything else and then we're gonna demobilize this guy and demobilize this guy uh, and so our landings are just gonna get in and then we're gonna toot it and boot it uh, as it were um, I think that oh I think we might have canceled our naval invasion normally in kind of vanilla you just go after Alaska specifically uh, and you just seize a beachhead looks like we do have okay so we're gonna go for a naval invasion here, and we're gonna go with this four stack, and we're gonna click confirm. And so in here we see, we seize another beachhead, and we're just gonna keep doing this so that they decay down uh, faster than we do, uh, so that we can get this enforcement on. Also, um, again, hopefully that they do not land us themselves. Um, also, we had noticed, uh, in particular in the budget, we were accidentally overpaying instead of underpaying slightly, and so we rectified that, uh, you know, mistake. Uh, now we do have a little bit of a prestige penalty, but that's not too big a deal, and we do get to, to turn up oh wait this is not we need the next tech we need the next tech so we need to get dialectics in order to turn that up uh but all right so let's get dialectics i guess uh i think that we do get we do we get another thing no do we get another journal entry no we do not so i think that we actually want dialectics uh, so we're gonna go for dialectics uh, a little bit ahead of time um, but this is just so that our unis will go uh, relatively faster and also mass comm uh, will actually yeah this will get cheaper as soon as mass comm finishes nat spreading so we should get it in relatively short order uh, and then we can go for water tube boiler it looks like water tube boiler is also nat spreading so we'll have water tube boiler soon enough and almost certainly gonna high roll on this agrarianism and uh, we are doing okay with this war as well uh, but I think we want to keep naval landing and keep uh, going in. Now why are our guys just getting stuck in the void over there or what? How come they're not... Oh, I guess got a lot of days left. I guess because they're going from one side to the other or something. It's got a bit of a problem. Um, so we're going to get... I think we're gonna get uh, this. So now they're on 100%. Somehow we're not rolling high enough, but now the, it just coasts through. I don't think there's a way for us to fail. Neither of these have enough radicalism to really go after this. So we are guaranteed at this point, virtually speaking, don't wanna jinx it, uh, that we get this in. Uh, just kind of inspecting the queue, seeing how things are developing. I'm thinking that we do want to now maybe swap. Uh, we aren't super deep in the fishing. Oop. What happened? I thought we had swapped to the fishing. All right, fair enough. Um, we are going to disband, and we are going to try and have a think where we want to go next uh, in regards to this. Now, we could go grain. This is possible. I think what I like is actually going for furniture, uh, and uh, because one of the inputs, glass is one of the inputs on our stuff, and so this is going to be uh, useful in this regard. We'll do this one for now. But glass is one of the inputs for our, uh, we'll put this one on auto expand, for our food industries. And so by decreasing the price of the input, we could try and make the, the food industries a little bit uh, better. And also, I think we're going to throw up some glass wherever we have, uh, sorry, wherever we have lead mines. So we have lead mines here, Chicago, yeah, so we have lead mines in several places, and so we'll throw up at least one level of glass in each of these areas as well uh, to try and, uh, you know, abuse some mechanics. And also, we're seeing we are having a little bit of a, a little bit of, oh no. Oh no, the UK has decided now is the time, baby. Now's the time. 
we love the anchorages. It's our favorite PM. Is that what go what's going on? AI, by the way, is way more aggressive about upping their university in this patch, which is actually super nice because it makes Nat spread a lot better. Well, it doesn't look like it. We don't have a net deficit of that stuff. So, but why don't we build a little bit more uh, ports, at least here in the capital? Uh, actually, we would want them here. And the reason why is we would want to build ships there specifically. So let's actually delete this port. And the reason why is this is our place where we have a bonus towards shipbuilding output. So we will put a shipyard there. We'll put it on auto expand. And this way, this will also be a little bit more robust once we get free of the UK's market, which is not right now, but we are going to get recognition here soon. It is time for us. It's not this uprising. That's not what this is about. It is time for us to ascend to our rightful throne as the warlord the rice warlord so now we are going to be getting huge ipt contribution efficiency and it's either on aristocrats or farmers so i guess we wouldn't tremendously mind the farmers um you know kind of coming on up in that way uh so we could try and go homesteading at some point uh this will radicalize the shogunate though we could just like wait out for a market liberal guy we could go tenant farmers we could even go commercialize agriculture and just like put that on the back burner for a little bit i think we're probably going to want to go towards some sort of voting system that's a little bit better oh man we got a royalist boy this guy's a royalist or he's authoritarian same difference uh now how about we just exile you yeah that seems good to me uh and instead we get a moderate who is not going to oppose us uh you know maybe going into some landed voting uh sort of thing which is going to help us uh to kneecap these guys eventually moving to parliamentary republic something like this we do want to get onto some sort of no migration controls and we do also want to get on some sort of schooling i think the schooling is going to be a lot more efficient for us in uh kind of the short term but we prefer public schools which is uh locked for us for now uh because we have state religion uh which is not going to be easy to get off of so i think we're going to go for no migration controls so people can move around in our country which they currently can't actually maybe we go landed voting for now yeah let's go landed voting it is going to make the samurai a little upset not too big a deal and we are also going to be getting recognition and napoleonic warfare here uh which doesn't really do anything in the mod currently because uh, not everything's implemented. Do we really need to revoke Sakhalin? I think we're just going to stick in to revoke the claim on Sakhalin because it's only a couple more ticks uh, and we'll have it. Uh, you know, they're minus 20 somehow still, but we just need to eat a couple more ticks off of them and then we will be getting, um, you know, everything we ever wanted. Uh, because we will become the rice warlord and now we are recognized so now we're a recognized country in the british market we can leave the market if we wanted i think right now the market is benefiting us but also we're gonna have a huge come up in a couple ways so first of all we're getting diplomatic packs from russia and this is going to be good but second of all all of our buildings are now getting to sell their goods at way higher prices, which is tremendously useful uh, for us because it is not be using the local price as much. Uh, and the reason for this is that, uh, or is using, uh, yeah, so the local price is now much diluted because when we were under traditionalism, we had this minus 15% mappy. And so when we were overproducing a good uh, in a given place, so if we take a look at balance here, we are overproducing grain here in Kanto, right? By a tremendous amount. And what would happen is the local price would be lower and it would be uh, weighted more heavily as we have less mappy uh, when it was at 70%. So 30% was informed by the local price and now only 15% is informed by the local price, which pulls the price of all these things up. Because we have a positive balance or we have a balance that's really, really big. We have way more sell orders than buy orders here we would prefer the price be higher because there's more sell orders because every single uh one of these grain things is going to be way more profitable so we're expecting yeah look this is what we're expecting we're expecting the omni pop off and not only that the i investment pool is hugely growing here and i'm guessing in our queue it's just going to get just absolutely smattering of uh, rice farms in just a second uh, this is going to be really big and this is why we pop off as the rice warlord here uh, now that this has happened we don't care about this major restoration bs like nobody cares dude we're about the rice life uh you know if it's 
If it's nice, it's rice. If it's rice, it's nice. This is what I'm telling you. No head lice. We are trying to crank up and abuse the fact that this building should cost double the construction it does. And anyone who says, uh, you know, it, 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 it's, it's buy one, get one free. It's BOGO. And it's, if it's free, it's for me, right? So why not just abuse this? Now, we will have to kind of improve the supply chains here. Uh, but uh, also, trade improves as you get more mappy uh this is because you are able to uh kind of oversupply in a better way and uh if you are trying to export you are able to oversupply the market while still being profitable and if you are importing your market price will have a heavier weight towards what's going on so for example it should be easier for us to yeah it should be easier for us to profitably import stuff uh to depress uh you know the our queue we don't want our queue to build fabric we don't want our queue to build livestock there's a bunch of things we we don't want our queue to build, right? Because we want to be entirely focused on producing grain ourselves. Notice, oh wow, we could actually profitably import grain. No shot we're doing that. We are here to produce the grain, not to import it. Uh, but we will import these other agricultural goods pretty aggressively that way uh our queue is not incentivized to build it uh especially and uh this is like a huge difference like when you were looking before whenever we popped in and tried to do a trade route none of it would be profitable but also very distinctly now we're going to be able to get a lot more groceries now so these might not be immediately more exportable but they will be more exportable down oh sorry they might not be immediately more exportable they're not uh but they will be down the line although this the booze is pretty good everyone knows the pope wants his booze but i think that's going to conclude this episode today where we have gotten what we wanted everything we ever wanted we are the rice warlord here now uh we do have to fix some stuff up obviously even with <laughs> we're getting a 20 percent tax raise and we're making this much money and it's not like the diplo pact is absolutely huge let's actually can we find where the crank up is look tariffs just cranked up super hard uh although this is because our trade routes cranked up in size because trade is better when you have more mappy but let's see if other stuff consumption taxes went up because pops are consuming more poll taxes went up uh yeah this just everything pops up with that mappy uh you know like number and so and also our construction good cut prices went down because it's more informed by more market prices rather than local prices and so this is all tremendously good for us anyways i hope you enjoyed this episode if you did feel free to leave a like comment a subscription this sort of thing uh, we will almost certainly solve this bureaucracy in the interim and other than that have a good day